All right, so we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys today. The most hated team, pretty much, I'd say, in the NFL. Everyone hates the Dallas Cowboys. Even people that are not even in the NFCs, they just hate. They love seeing Dallas lose. They love seeing Dallas struggle. I don't know why. Um, it's just a thing, it, especially when your nickname, which I'll get to, uh, definitely distinctly represents the entire sport. Um, we're going to give you some some problems when you start losing a lot and you want it, they want to keep losing. Um, I'm sure it's because dynasties and all that. But anyway, um, overall, if you're looking at the Dallas Cowboys establishing in January 28th, 1960, 57 years ago, their first season being in 1960. They play in AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, and they're headquarters in the Ford Center at the Star, Frisco, Texas. Um, they're, they've been in the National Football League since 1960. They were in the Western Conference from 1960, Eastern Conference from 1961 to 1969, and in the Capital Division 1967 to 1969. They have been in the NFC since 1970, and they've been in the NFC since 1970. Their colors are navy blue, metallic silver, white, and royal blue. Their mascot is Rowdy. The owner, the president, and the general manager are Jerry Jones. The CEO is Stephen Jones, and or Stephen Jones, and the head coach is Jason Garrett. Been the Dallas Cowboys since 1960. Nothing has changed. The nicknames are Big D, the Boys, Doomsday Defense, and how about America's team? That's pretty much why you get criticized. When you call the America's team, it's a problem. Like, especially for, for other teams, other fans, I think their team should be represented in a more respected light than Dallas, you know? So, of course, everyone will hate the Cowboys. Now, they've won five league championships, which pretty much is five Super Bowls, um, which, is, which is incredible, um, in my honest opinion. Um, and they won in 1979, which was Super Bowl six. They won in 1977, which was Super Bowl 12. They won in 1992, I believe, is 27. 1993, 28, and then 1995, which is 30. Um, won 10 conference titles. They won the NFL Eastern in 1966 and 1967. They won the NFC overall in 1970, 1971, 1975, 1977, 1978, 1992. 1993 and 1995, and they've won their division 22 times in the NFL Capital from 1967 to 1969, in the NFC East from 1970 to 1973, then 1976-1979, and 1981-1985, 1992-1998, 2007-2009, 2014-2016. Playoff wise, playoff appearances 32, 1966 through 1973, 1975 through 1983, 1985, 1991 to 1999, 2003, 2006, 2007, 2009, 2014, 2016. They're home, well, pretty much they. They were played in the Cotton Bowl from 1960 to 1971, moved to Texas Stadium from 1971 to 2008, and are in AT&T Stadium since 2009. Again, a team that has success. They've won five Super Bowls. They've done it before in the past. Obviously looking to be relevant again with Elliott there, with Prescott. Definitely they have a, a future. They are out of the playoffs, though, as of pretty much uh, today or even yesterday because they lost the Seattle Seahawks. So overall, this is a Dallas team that, nope, they will not be able to contest their chance at winning a Super Bowl this year, but they have a chance at getting six pretty soon. So this is a franchise that's had some success, so I can see why the hate is real. All right, we're going to start with the QB of the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to be Troy Aikman. What he's done for this entire organization has been fantastic. It's hard because you got to pick between Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman. I mean, it's a, it's a hard deal. Um, you know, some people even would put Tony Romo. Some people that are, you know, have not watched Cowboy football much, football in general, they might, you know, 
Pots you put him in, but no, uh, Troy Hickman is, is the guy uh, in my honest opinion. He's a Hall of Famer, he's a six-time Pro Bowler, he won three Super Bowls with them, passed for over 30,000 yards in the regular season. He had 150-plus touchdowns. He was six victories away from getting 100 career victories in the regular season. A guy that has led numerous fourth-quarter comebacks, game-winning drives. Um, you know, part of those that triplet team again won three Super Bowls in the '90s. Big part of this dynasty. Just overall, you know, was actually a really, really good QB. Was a great leader, and everything he did was was pretty great. I mean, Super Bowl MVP, won the Walter Payton Man of the Year in 1997. Was part of the 1989 NFL Rookie Team. So overall, this is uh, this is nice. This is nice to put in Troy Aikman. Um, he definitely is, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked kind of guys in. in in the history of the league, so I think having Troy Aikman, that, that just it's just respect to the guy. What he... All right, so I'm not gonna roll with any fullback. I'm just gonna go straight running back, and we go from a Hall of Fame QB to a Hall of Fame running back, and arguably, you know, the best running back of all time, uh, which is like I said, debatable in my opinion. My list goes um, like in terms of top three, no particular order. Peyton. Uh, Barry Sanders and Emmett, right? So th those three guys are, are phenomenal. Um, and, yeah, they're definitely always going to be in the discussion for who's the best of all time. He definitely makes a case for it, right? Anyway, Hall of Famer. He's an 8 Pro Bowl. He's a four-time All-Pro. He won the Super Bowl three times. He's an MVP. He's done a lot. 13 years in Dallas, two years in Arizona. Total-wise, he's rushed for... What? How much has he rushed for? He's rushed for... The lead leading rushing yards of all time, 18,355 rushing yards. Um, the ability of having 164 rushing touchdowns, played in over 200 games. You know, that's another guy that also had 500 plus receptions, 3,000 plus receiving yards, 11 receiving touchdowns. Can beat you with his legs, either through the run game or through the passing game. Overall, a guy that you know, has won three rings, of course, is part of the triplets, you know, which includes. Troy, of course, and Emmett, and Michael Urban. And, uh, yeah, no, fantastic guy. Won the Offensive Rookie of the Year in 1990. Won the MVP in 1993. Won the Player of the Year, the Burt Bell Award in 1993. Also in 1993, won the Super Bowl MVP. Was, uh, was part of the all 1990s team. 1990 NFL Rookie Team. Overall, it's it's who you need in the backfield. He's, he's definitely a tough guy to bring down. And he's going to run with the best. So, honestly, I love what they got here. Aikman, Emmett, fantastic. All right, so wide receiver is going to be Michael Irvin. Right, Michael Irvin was a part of the Cowboys pretty much his entire career from 1988 to 1999. He did a lot. He was a fantastic receiver. Hall of Fame guy. So, I think having the fact that you've got a Hall of Fame QB, a Hall of Fame running back, and a Hall of Fame receiver, I think that's, I think that's pretty good in my in my book. Uh, so yeah, uh, now Michael Irvin, uh, not just a Hall of Famer, also a five-time Pro Bowler, an All-Pro, and a three-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, a guy that can, you know, he has that connection. He's part of the triplets. He's the last of the triplets. Um, he's gonna do some great things. He's got some great leadership, and honestly, just give him the ball. Honestly, he's, he's caught over 700 plus receptions and he's had about 65 receiving touchdowns again for many people nowadays that's not a lot it's not a lot of numbers that, that's a questionable would he be in the hall of fame right now there's a lot of receivers out there so like, have caught over a thousand so you know i'm glad mike Corbin is in the hall of fame because it would have been hard for him to get in now with his numbers his numbers were great but they weren't the best ever, if that, if, if you know what I, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, it was a part of the all 1990s team, and uh, like I said, just a great leader. I think uh, his connection with Aikman, it's just, it's gonna work out, work out very well. All right, now throw up the Mexes, Dallas fans. The guy right next to Mike Lurvin is gonna be Des Bryant, a guy that people actually don't talk about much. They did before he used to be, well. He still is regarding um, one of the best receivers, but is he considered top five? 
today day? No, he's definitely fallen off the map since 2014. But I mean, you know, what can you do when you have Zeke there? You have new players. Dak's doing great. Dak's also a guy that's been able to get more than just Dez the ball. Uh, so you know, for him, for Dez, it's definitely a. Um, I would say it's a struggle. I feel like he definitely feels. He feels pretty sad. I mean, I would. I mean, a guy that had so much attention on. He, he was definitely one of the top receivers in the game. Falling off the map in three years. Not great, but I think putting him on there, if you get the Des Bryant of that, of the old, of the, the guy that can really get after it, and uh, you know, especially with the whole, you know, having around like 90 reception, and multiple receiving touchdowns, and, and uh, you know, like. 900 to a thousand kind of receiving yards. Like if you can get that Des Bryant, that's scary. So him and Michael Irvin would be fantastic. Again, Des Bryant is a three-time Pro Bowl. He's an All-Pro. Uh, I do believe he's going to do a great job, um, especially with Aikman. Aikman's going to do a great job finding and giving him the ball. He has over 500 receptions, over 7,000 receiving yards, about 73 receiving touchdowns. It's a guy that can get after. So I do not think that anybody should uh, give up on him. Um, he was in 2010 NFL rookie team, so I think he should get some respect, um, even though he definitely has fallen off the map. And the slot guy, it's going to be Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson is a three-time Pro Bowler, a three-time All-Pro, and a Super Bowl champion. A guy that, at the time in the 70s, was a big target for Roger Staubach. And a guy that could give you some great numbers out there. I think he will definitely give them some great numbers, especially when Michael Irvin and Dez are covered pretty well. You've got Drew Pearson up there in the middle, or just shift him around a little bit, try to get him open. I think Drew Pearson can definitely do some great things. Uh, again, I just I believe in his ability, and I believe in him linking up with Aikman and Aikman giving them the ball. Uh, I really do believe that everything will work out. I really do like this receiver set. I really do, really do. And uh, the tight end is going to be Jason Witten. My opinion, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, for some guys, he's not. Uh, just look at uh, the Jason Whitlock and Colin Coward show. He's strongly disbelieving that he's a Hall of Famer. Again, I don't know. It's all their opinion. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't be the manipulator on on what he thinks. But I do believe that he's a Hall of Famer. I think he's done a great job for many, many years. I think he was really he's worked, he worked his butt off for many, many years. And the guy that's a 10-time Pro Bowl or a two-time All-Pro, you no, know, he hasn't been able to go to the Super Bowl, hasn't gone that far in the playoffs as being a part of the Cowboys. What happens when you just... I wouldn't even blame Tony Romo. I just blame just... They burst better teams. They had weird situations, they were put in weird situations, they just didn't execute, and they didn't get to get to where they want to go, I mean, you know, there are just some teams that were just too dominant, again, he's still doing what he can, he's, he's got about 61 receptions this year, he's about to get possibly 7 by the, you know, the year's end, you know, just give him like 9 more catches, he's got 7, another productive year for him, so the guy that has 1,150 receptions, over 12,000 receiving yards and 68 receiving touchdowns. You want to give Jason Witten the ball. Troy Aikman is going to love working with this guy and uh, everything about him. Walter Payton Man of the Year in 2012, 2003 NFL rookie team. A guy that still dominates the league. A guy that you, you know, you know, uh, his value is way up. So, on top of that, you don't want, you can't find any receiver. Jason Witten's the guy. All right, you got to look at this offensive line and left tackle is going to be Ralph Neely. Guy that's a huge two-time Pro Bowler, a three-time All-Pro, two-time Super Bowl champion. A guy that's started 168 games. Overall, just overall, uh, overall, just reliable, reliable tackle. So I think that'll work out super, super well. And uh, it's a good start to the line. All right, so. Now, left guard, Larry Allen, pretty much the strongest dude at that guard position. He's, no one's going to get past him. This guy is amazing. 
He's a Hall of Fame guard, so that's what you need. You need some great Hall of Fame, some great reliable offensive line if you really want to be able to make sure that Emmett has the holes and, and Aikman's got the time. Larian's going to do just that. He's going to do a fantastic job at the guard position. 11-time Pro Bowl. He's a six-time All-Pro. He's a Super Bowl champion. Played for the Niners two years. Played for Dallas 12 years. Uh, back when, you know, the, the Dallas Cowboys were a big deal. Um, overall, a guy that has played in 200-plus games. And not much else I can say other than that. He is one of the best of all time. He's a 1994 all-rookie all team. He was a part of the all-1990s team and the all-2000s team. Um, just a guy that you know is going to do some great things in Dallas. So. All right, yeah. Now the center is going to be Tom Rafferty. Tom Rafferty is a Super Bowl champion. He played in the 70s and 80s. And it is career in 89 as the 35-year-old, the guy that played in 203 games. It's just a really reliable center, a guy that, you know, never had much in terms of rewards. I'm sure people didn't really know much about him outside of that Dallas Cowboys team. But Tom Rafferty is going to come out and he's going to play and he's definitely going to do some great things. Um, the way he did with Roger Staubach, he's going to do with Aikman. Now on the other side, we're going to have another guard, the name Nate Newton. Nate Newton was another big guard tackle guy that just played in the, the, the era of, you know, that dynasty in Dallas in the 90s. The guy was paired up with Allen, was phenomenal. They were a phenomenal pairing at guard. And uh, honestly, they were a big part of Emmett's success through them through those gaps I mean honestly Nate Newen Larry Allen and that line they just provided some great holes over there but yeah Nate Newen he's a six-time Pro Bowl he's a two-time All-Pro three-time Super Bowl champion played from 86 to 1999 played in Dallas 13 years played in Carolina for one year a guy that's he played in 198 games and started in 180 reliable guy uh, should be up for debate for being a Hall of Famer uh, he was a part of the All-1990s team, second team. So I believe he should be up for debate. Uh, but either or, fantastic football player, and I think it'll work out in the end. All right, and to finish off the line, we have right tackle, Rayfield Wright, a Hall of Famer, a six-time Pro Bowl, a three-time All-Pro, and won the Super Bowl twice. Just uh, overall, it's what you need. A guy that can also play tight end, which is actually pretty fascinating. But yeah, no, a guy that can can be a fantastic right tackle. And, but also, like I said, you need an eligible receiver. You need another guy. This is what's pretty unique about this team is having Rayfield right. That, I think that's I think that's pretty good to have him being able the ability of you know possibly catching, you know, possibly being that extra receiver. But this is a guy that can block really well. A guy that's going to do some great things and. Um, yeah, part of that all 1970s team, a guy that's made an impact. So yeah, overall, he should be uh, should be killing it for this for this Cowboys line.